OK, so we're moving into our sketching part of the project here. We've got our clay render set up, and we're going to go ahead and start sketching out our main silhouette. So the way I like to work here is essentially I just use a very simple round brush in Photoshop, and I paint with red. I do a little bit of vector stuff, mostly just with the shapes that are tricky to draw. But overall, I'm keeping things super loose, super sketchy, and rasterizing everything. And really, the reason behind that is so that I'm not distracted by any kind of color or value or anything too refined. And uh, it allows me to focus on that main silhouette that's going to give me that primary form that will inform the secondary and tertiary forms down the line. So getting the structure going here some crosshairs, the outer silhouette sort of started. And I'm just positioning things so I can have something to paint around. So starting to chase the form, there's sort of this undulating pulse that's going to come from the bottom. And I'm creating some vector circles initially that I'll be uh, scaling down, duplicating, and moving into situ here. I'm thinking about the design in motion, mid-motion essentially. Where has it been? Where is it starting? And where is it going? It's always important to structure your design this way and not get trapped into a static design like we talked about before. Again, not worrying too much about how it sits in perspective. I don't need to finesse it all that much. This is about moving quickly. I'm arranging these pretty fast, rasterizing them together and then flipping it so that I have the uh, subsequent globe design sort of formed already. So now we have our main shape here. I'm going to add our radial gradient to knock it back, give it a bit more depth. And I want to keep pushing this idea of it having layers. So I'm going to duplicate the whole shape and squeeze it down, scale it up, and essentially give it some more visual interest on the outside and the motion that's implied is now a little clearer. Starting to draw some point cloud type details on the outside and I'm not very worried about what the final shapes are going to look like here. This is more about generating a structure for me to reference later on. When I bring this into After Effects and Illustrator, I'll use this as a guide, a loose guide for my final design choices. And this is again about moving quickly, not being sort of contained by any shape or idea. It's about making mistakes like you can see here, I'm trying out this shape here. It doesn't really work out, but that's OK. That's the whole point. And I end up moving away from this sort of crosshair idea here and go back to my original design. Moving things back into place duplicating our triangle here and placing it below. So you can see I'm quickly flattening everything, being able to erase and draw on top. And that's the main power of this exercise and gives me the ability to really quickly change or revise a design. And here I'm sort of moving away from the very horizontal 
details that we have going on and, and trying to add in some vertical lines. It's good to think about contrast when you're thinking about your composition and your shapes. And in this case, our design was lacking in vertical interest. So creating a center line to sort of vibe off of and guide some new ideas. I'm not spending too much time in one part of the design. I try to move around the composition a bit just to give myself more flexibility. Here I just test out the final render, see how it plays, switching it up a little bit and go back to the clay. Continuing to try to push the depth, adding the radial gradient in the center here, setting it to overlay. It's pretty subtle in the end, but a little bit goes a long way usually with this kind of stuff. So still lacking in vertical detail. So we're going to go ahead and add in a circle element to mirror what's happening horizontally. So I create a vector circle here, set it to stroke. And pretty similar to previously, I duplicate it and squeeze it in, creating sort of a wireframe feel. OK, so now that we have our layers in place here, I'll go ahead and combine them into one and flatten it into a rasterized layer and then add the same layer mask as before so that it knocks the center back. And this allows me to now kind of erase the lines a little bit and just to have some imperfections in the overall shape. So now we duplicate the main shape that we have here and use the transform warp to create a little bit of a varied shape from our other circular shapes that are in our composition. And it's a nice idea to try to vary line weights, but also try to vary shapes that are in your composition to give it a bit more visual interest. I try to create a little bit of depth with this new shape as well by duplicating it and scaling it down and, and placing it inside our sphere. It's pretty subtle, but these kind of things kind of help the overall look and feel. So to change up the line weight of our composition here, I'm going to duplicate our main circles and add a outside stroke, thicken up the lines, lower the opacity a little bit, and then scale that whole layer up. Again, I rasterize the layer style so that I can affect it with the paintbrush. Just getting it into position here. And then I mask the whole thing out and then just start painting in the details. And what I'm doing here is suggesting motion I'm suggesting movement and you can see just from very simple strokes and very simple additions here, I can create a much more dynamic and uh, interesting looking piece. So if you noticed, I flipped my canvas and it's something that I do quite regularly. I have it set to a hotkey and it's a, it's a pretty common, pretty standard technique, but it's something I use often. And it's a great way to look at your design in a different light from a different angle. And I'm just continuing to paint the details in. I had a circular marquee here with a gradient from above and below, uh, a radial gradient from above and below to Im imply a little bit more depth. I'm going to blur out the layer quickly here to give it a bit of a halo effect. You'll notice I'm always zooming in and out as well, making sure things are working properly. And here I'm 
going to go ahead and quickly do a color test on the render. Trying not to look at one thing for too long and then just kind of as a gut check, making sure things are working. And I'm, I'm liking this. This feels kind of cool, kind of retro. So I'm happy with this so far. So I don't need to keep this or anything. I can just toss it and go back to our drawing. I think we're getting pretty close to being done with this. I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping here and adding a label for my own organizational purposes. As we move down the different states, it'll be nice to have them labeled. And it's just kind of good practice. Again, no one's really going to see this beyond yourself, but it's a good idea to be organized. So we're going to go ahead and add one more piece of detail here. I'm going to take the entire folder, duplicate it, remove the glows and the halo that doesn't flatten down nicely and flatten it into a single layer. And we're going to fill it with a off-white that will provide a bit of visual contrast, a bit of visual change from all the red. And I use the same technique where I just mask the whole thing and then I scale it up slightly and then I just paint in on the mask with the inverted color. And you can see right away that the color contrast lets my eye move around the composition. It's more visual interesting. And now when I scale it up and away from the center, it has that much more movement, that much more visual depth and interest. And it really shows the power of this technique, which is that you can change it up really quickly, take the same elements that you made previously and, and just change a color or add a, a quick tweak to it and get a very different look and feel very quickly. So I think we're pretty much wrapped with this one. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next state.